Since the beginning of time, mankind has wanted to see a pure head-to-head -head competition between snowbike titans. This is Timbersled versus Yeti! Well, Scott, this whole series today has been a year in the making. What did we see last year that piqued your interest? Last year when we saw the Yeti, we just had to know more. We had to know how is this going to perform against the timber sled. So what did we do? We built two identical bikes. We got the flagship long track from Yeti 137. We got the flagship from timber sled 137. Both limited editions, both with rear suspension. Yep. Bikes are identical. It's been awesome. And we have lots of findings to share with you. But today it's all about on the trail. Let's go. Let's run. All right, we found a place out of the wind to record a few, uh, a few little snippets about things we've observed between Helga, the timber sled, and Anna, the Yeti, otherwise identical bikes, and this is all about on the trail. So I had the good fortune of riding the Yeti today. It's really nice on the trail. One thing I got to say that I love is that little switch. When you're on the trail, you flip the switch, you get a whole bunch of extra travel out of the rear end, and it's great, uh, especially when the, when the trail's whipped out or otherwise bumpy. It's pretty plush. It is pretty nice. We found that the Yeti, Anna in this case, has a very confidence-inspiring manner on the trail, regardless of the conditions, everything from pretty hard pack to loose powder. You can rail corners and go really fast with a lot of confidence all the time. Not always the case with, with Halga and the timber sled. Andrew, you had some good remarks about today though in the snow conditions and how things are maybe a little different. Once there's a bit of a base and there's a hard packed snow to ride on, the, the timber sled ski is, is, is quite nice on the trail. Yeah, it seemed to be comparable to the Yeti today in the right type of snow, you're just flying on this thing. That's right. So a couple of notes about comfort on the trail. Right, now before we talk about comfort on the trail and te Yeti versus timber sled, we have to tell you, we've modified these bikes for ergonomics. We have a riser in here that's moved our body up and back a little bit to get a little bit more weight over the tail end. So we're not dealing with uh, purely stock machines here, but they are identical. If you're interested in these risers, which we think are really great, they're available on the snowbikeshop.com. Some more notes on ergonomics. When I'm on Helga, the timber sled, I find it ergonomically to be really it's just right. Whereas when I'm on the Yeti, it's, it's a more aggressive position. I have more weight on my hands and uh, maybe that's what's giving me such a positive ski response, but it's more fatiguing. If I was gonna be out ripping trails all day, comfort, performance. Now, they're pretty close in performance overall, but that, that is a difference. There is a difference there for sure. Sure. One of my new games on Anna, the Yeti, is to uh, do really short little turns on the trail, kind of like uh, if I was skiing, getting into a good rhythm, doing some quick slalom turns. There's no purpose to it whatsoever. It's just, it's just playing around. But it is pretty fun on that bike. And it's cool to see ski response and how the bike handles those tight, sharp, aggressive corners and turns. It is. Now, we've both done a little bit of that on Helga, the timber sled, but it's, it's not really as much fun. No. But you know, it's, it's kind of a pointless thing unless you're just kind of going out there having fun. But it is an observation. So yeah, those little slalom turns are fun, but it's the big GS turns that we focus on because we do it all day long on the trail. That's right, and, and the two bikes both do them very well. But once again, Anna, the, uh, the Yeti, you can lay it right over, smash the gas. You never really feel like the front end is going to wash out on you. Helga, very snow dependent. That's the timber sled. If it's firm, you're, you're flying, but if it starts getting a little bit softer, it does feel like that front end's gonna wash out. Let's talk quickly about the kits and the differences that we're noticing on the trail anyway. And it's chain drive versus belt drive. There is a noticeable difference there. When you smash the gas on Anna, the Yeti, the spool up is right now. The power yeah. delivery to the track is phenomenal. And we've even, well, you've even commented too, jumping on Helga from Anna, getting back to the timber sled, there's quite a difference. It feels sluggish. It actually feels like you're hopping on a lower performance machine. The bikes are identical. That's the essence of this whole experiment. The bikes have to be identical. So we can't say, oh, it's because you have a different modification or power part. It's not. You smash the gas in a Yeti, you go. 
And we're going to have more about that because that applies to not just on the trail, it applies to in the trees, sure. in the subalpine, uh, maybe even as you're going into jumps if you have a short run in. So mm-hmm. we'll, uh, we'll tackle those later this season. Well, Andrew, that's a wrap for On the Trail, our first uh, episode in Timberside versus Yeti for this year. We have quite a few more episodes to come. We've been getting lots of footage, making lots of observations. And what are a couple of things that are coming up that you're excited about? Deep powder and playing in the trees. All right, that's episode one of Timberside versus Yeti. And if you had to pick one, Anna versus Helga, who's it going to be? Anna the Yeti. Why is that? Awesome ski and super spool up in the track. Yeah, it's a full-on party. They're both great bikes, but Anna takes the win for round one.